Do you mind saying a few words? Sure. Uh, good. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah, that was more than enough. Enough words. Yeah, that's actually enough. You. All right, so thank you so much for speaking with us on camera today. Um, so tell us a bit about how it was being in the NICU for 75 days and why it is so important to, to you to have a new hospital for sick kids. Uh, oh, you can look at me. Okay, now, yeah, we're having a conversation. Yeah. Um, so being in the NICU as a new mom for 75 days, especially, so two and a half, very uh, hard-earned months, uh, with Elliot was overwhelming. It was totally unexpected for us. We had no preparation. Um, Elliot got sick very suddenly. I had him about uh, six weeks early, also very unexpected. Uh, so it was like being thrust into the middle of an ocean and learning how to swim on the fly. Uh, so coming into a situation like that, having just had a baby as well, navigating the halls of the hospital, well, my body itself was so vulnerable. And so many of the moms in the NICU that come and visit us here at Sick Kids are in wheelchairs coming over from Mount Sinai. So having to take care of yourself and me at your baby's bedside, um, it uh, is a unique experience to new moms that have to visit at Sick Kids. And so specific to the space, navigating that, when you're not feeling that great yourself, when you've just had a baby, uh, when your baby is really critically ill, um, because the babies in the NICU here are the tiniest, sickest babies uh, in Canada. Um, so it was, uh, it was a unique experience and, and also not without its uh, stresses because of the space. So our NICU here at the Kids is ward style. So there's uh, at least four babies in every room, although there's space for six. So if uh, people get really, uh, if there's a lot of really sick babies, the space is tight, but you can fit extra babies in the room. So that meant sharing a very small space with your sick child, with other sick children, and other moms who had just given birth, who are stressed out and vulnerable. Um, and it uh, that takes a toll as well, being so close to other parents who are going through the worst moments of their lives um, and the bed spaces are incredibly small so you have to stay within this red tape on the floor they delineate it and that's the infection control prevention you can't cross the red tape into another baby's bed space which means that the baby all of the baby's equipment their IV pool plus the parents plus the nurses and doctors all need to fit into a very small space uh, in our ward style NICU and so uh, it's everything is happening right on top of <laughs> Of, of, of everything else. So it can be very overwhelming, very stressful. Um, one measure that we uh, use here at Sick Kids to increase privacy is having parents put on headphones while doctors come in and speak to other families about their babies and during rounds, um, which also is, um, uh, it's not without its stress for the parents sitting there because you can still see people's faces and know if they're getting good news or bad news. Um, and it also doesn't allow you to hear your babies cry if you're able to hear them. So it, it disconnects you a little bit as well. So, so those are some of the struggles that we have with our space here at Sick Kids, uh, specifically in the NICU. And how important is the Sick Kids versus campaign to you? And how are you getting involved? And maybe what's some advice you have for other people, or parents or youth or anybody? It's, um, I, I feel like with any any sort of unexpected health condition, with health in general, it's, uh, I call it the great equalizer. So who knows what baby is going to be sick, what's going to happen with them, you just can't predict it. And so I see a campaign like Versus, where we're all in it together, um, helping these people, families like me, babies like my son Elliot, uh, navigate the worst moments of their life and come out at, at the, the other side with a hopefully healthy baby, a healthy family. And I know uh, with us, Elliot's three and a half and is healthy and incredible today, thanks to sick kids. Um, and so I see a versus campaign as uh, everybody coming together um, to help these babies and these families navigate a, a difficult road that often they didn't expect or ask for. Um, and specifically the fundraising campaign uh, is focusing on the NICU and getting the NICU space uh, up to par to make it easier for families and new moms like myself to be able to come into the hospital, breast pump it uh, beside their baby's bedside, which helps milk flow um, and, and how improves uh, the outcomes for these babies as well. So the campaign specifically is going to have a huge impact on improving the NICU space and making it easier to care for these infants and their, and their parents as well. Awesome. And do you have any advice for any donators or any 
Anything you'd like to say? Any final words? <laughs> uh, fundraise. Get out there. Join a crew. Um, you know, we all have a crew. It, it could be specific, something that you identify with, but the crew uh, overall is people who are passionate about helping other people and helping these vulnerable, tiny babies who uh, had a, have to fight from the second that they're born and, and are in situations that uh, they didn't ask for. So I think that um, donations have a huge impact, and I've seen it, you know, firsthand uh, in some of the things that we're able to uh, benefit from in the hospital that made that tough road for us a little bit easier and certainly um, gave me the greatest gift at all, which is a happy, healthy three and a half year old. Thank you so much, Melissa. You are amazing and such a strong woman. Oh my goodness. <laughs>